Salutations. I've been away for a while. Uh, thank you to all that wish me well. I'm doing very well. Things are going very good. So thank you very much. Um, I wanted to um, kind of come to a, a, a point of dealing with what actually my experiences have showed me and actually the information that I've gotten from it and the understanding that I've gotten from it, all right? And how this figures in and this part of the science actually figures into my experiences. So this goes into um, what are the Akashic Records actually? What are they? The Records of Space and Time. And the first time I had heard about the Akashic Records was through Edgar Cayce. And that seems to be the first person that really mentioned it that I've seen record of. And then it kind of goes from there and we learn more and more. But anyway, what are those and how is it that they're accessed and it more than just saying it's this river of of consciousness or something like that really more what is it and also taking this and correlating this with what are black holes really and this is a great deal of information that I have gotten when dealing with Dr. Rudy Shields uh, somebody that took hours and hours we talked week after week about several things that had to do with my experiences and his science and I was very interested in his new founding and his new findings of what he calls Makos magnetically eternally collapsing objects. I've done several videos on those, but those actually are black holes and new, different than what uh, were described as theoretical black holes. These are more what he actually had derived from the data itself he's getting from the uh, astronomical observatories. That's what he worked on for 40 years studying black holes. So I have to go from that and taking that to the experience because he's not an experiencer, he was strictly a scientist. So anyway, taking that, <clears throat> excuse me, and melding what I learned from him with my experiences too. It's a, a beautiful thing, really cool. So anyway, what he calls with the black holes, with these Makos, is something they do is that they have hair. The scientists have always said, and astronomers, astronomers and astrophysicists have always used to say, black holes don't have hair meaning they don't have a magnetic field. Well, Rudy Shields would find out that they actually do. And they actually emit amount of material also, and they also create what's called the quantum hologram, which is the information that is taken in through the black hole also. And most importantly, that the black holes themselves are not infinite. All right, which meaning that when I was younger, like the movie The Black Hole and that whole theory on black holes is that they pull everything in even light, nothing can escape it. And that's not entirely correct, all right? In that uh, they're, they're not, they're also sometimes in the evolution of them to becoming black holes, though they become quasars and other things, they're some of the most brilliant uh, structures in the universe that we can see. Some of the Makos are beautiful, and I'll put some pictures of those up. You can actually see the Mako in the middle of some of the things we're calling nebula and other things. So. <clears throat> That's a step forward with that, all right? Now, going into dealing with these black holes and these Makos, what are they and how do they actually function, all right? That's uh, something that has been completely misunderstood, and this takes us more into conscious waves and brain waves. But conscious waves are what would emanate from our Creator, all right? And conscious waves come in two forms the spherical and the he helical, all right? You've got spiral and you've got the helix also are the ways that these conscious waves come. And we've seen that a lot. We've seen the spirals illustrated in art. We've seen that uh, brain waves illustrated as spirals. And again and again, that comes up in art and in psych psychology as well. You'll notice that. So those are the two ways in which we have conscious waves coming from our creator. I've heard them also called quantum conscious waves and taking that and tuning that, turning that a little bit more intense into something in our brains and our bodies that are called microtubules and brain microtubules. Microtubules of the brain actually make up neurons and interestingly enough the shape of microtubules are helical and spherical just like the conscious waves, so they are affected by the conscious waves. Now, taking it that the microtubules make up the, um, the neurons, this takes us into the brain function, once again, of uh, 
taking this forward into mirror neurons. There's a gentleman named V.S. Ramachandran that's done a bunch of work concerning the mirror neurons. And the mirror neurons, kind of breaking that down quickly, is the left and right hemisphere of the brain, but also how you can see the relate that like the monkeys can do the grab, relate, relate, re, re, grab and release reflex thing, and also the hundred monkey thing I think it's called or thousand monkey thing, which is how they learn things on another island that other monkeys have been seeing. They don't know how they're doing it, but this is actually seeing something, and then we can mimic that. Or when me talking to you or someone telling you a story, you can actually see it yourself. This is done by mirror neurons. And this is something else that is similar to how the Makos are actually functioning inside themselves. The information that comes in and so becomes part of this quantum hologram. And that, that is information of the universe itself starts wrapping itself around the Mako the same way we see like an accretion disk for a black hole doing, or the aerogosphere, you've got the same thing going on with actually the um, <clears throat> universe itself and the recording of space and time. So that is the Akashic Records itself. This is important, but more than that, how we are actually, sept uh, actually we actually can consciously perceive this through the three pounds of the thing in between our head, which is, contains conscious waves and brain waves itself, which are spiral. So that's just something to kind of take that a, a step forward. So that's one way that these black holes are functioning, these Makos are functioning as hard drives, as information centers. So this is very important. So anyway, going a step forward with that. Um, <clears throat> this kind of takes us into where does empathy come from? Where does emotion come from? It's not just from the heart center, period. It's also a brain function. And this thing's here, these microtubules and these neuron structures like this, and how this is connected to not just space, but to how the black holes function itself, and how they are the hard drives of the universe, and taking that further into how does this go into other entities that are coming here, and beings of not just light, but extraterrestrial. This takes us to that level too, and things that I've dealt with. <clears throat> um, the black hole, if word enough, curiously enough, what stops the black hole from being infinite, I found out, is called positronium. You can look that up for yourself, but positronium stops the black hole from being infinite and being something that's a singularity always taking things in. So that's not actually accurate. And in a way that they're saying that, that the black hole itself, what's coming through it through these Makos, is cosmic intelligence. That's another way for saying God consciousness. And when you look at how you've got a Mako, a black hole in the center of every galaxy, all trillions of them, that is the way the Creator expresses itself in every galaxy, in every part of the universe. I think that's fascinating. But dealing with this also <clears throat> took me in the faction, excuse me, that I'm dealing with beings from another universe. And I couldn't accept that at first. And when talking to someone like Rudy, he kept saying that, you know, you're dealing with beings from another universe. And I said, no, 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 from another galaxy, some of them. And when I started saying what these beings actually communicated with me, which I've told you before, beyond the exospace-time continuum, uh, that becomes an issue of, he's saying, you know, they're saying they're from another universe. They're not using that term, but that's actually what they're saying to you. And, you know, when I start really thinking of it and then how these Makos operate, it makes sense. So some of these civilizations that we're in communication with or communicating with others are using that accreditation disk of the Mako itself, the Akashic Records, to access civilizations and they may never longer exist themselves. Think about that. Yeah, so that accre the accretion disk and things like that is another way they're accessing <clears throat> people like us, perhaps, other, other, other civilizations, and that's a lot more going on there when dealing with the Akashic Records. So the Akashic Records is actually these Mako formations that are not the theoretical black holes we've been taught. There's something different, and the data shows that. The mathematical computation shows that, which some of that is beyond me. Anyway, taking this a step forward, all right, into the contact that I have had 
And when dealing with that, I've dealt with other actually entities from another universe. It makes sense with what I've seen and some of the things that have happened. Starting with uh, one of the experiences I've shared with you. This, the synaptic helmet. That is me with this helmet that came on and this appeared to be almost a conscious craft. I've talked about this experience before, so I won't go into that too deep, all right? But what this dealt with, it was giving me a frame of reference for the contact itself. The vibrations between myself and these, these uh, extraterrestrials was so off. These light beings, some of them, that they needed something to give me a frame of reference. And that's what this synaptic helmet was. But once again, this is dealing with brain waves. We're going into theta, delta, these different types of spiral brain waves. So that's worth thinking and worth, worth of comp, comp, comprehensive hinting on this. Another room <clears throat> aboard this craft is this one. I've shown you this one before. It's This was, I called it like a bridge. It was a room that had these wormholes opening and closing. That's what these are. So these would technically be like, I think, small makos that they're somehow generating. But this also leads to something that it's as a craft that is capable of choosing its path of coherency to another universe. That's a whole other type of a sentient craft that we haven't thought of before and we haven't taken into, um, I guess, uh, modalities, taken into modalities. And taking that and transferring that into the by tripyramidal Merkaba ship I've shown you. I didn't pull the, the sketches out for that, I'm sorry. But it's the one I've shown you. Uh, dozens of pic videos on that now. It's the craft that looked like a metal craft at first and it transformed into these crystals. Alright, what that was doing was that thing was changing to actually match its destination, which was in another universe. A universe that was based on something different than the spin, like our universe. Something that would, everything here is spin, spherical, helical, you see it's spears, that's what this universe is, even the electron around, it's everything here is a spin. So you get another universe that could be based on crystalline, on amorphous metals, other shapes, geometric shapes, a whole other thing going on. So what this ship did was did a pattern of unfoldment to where it was, to its destination. That's what I witnessed in the sky. So that takes, you know, at least that makes a little bit more sense and it helps and I think it will help others that have had maybe some experiences with some of these entities and these beings that are not coming from even this galaxy. They might be coming from different universes because space is not the way we think it is. Just dealing with these Makos is how to actually access them. It would be consciously, the same way the brain waves are functioning. It would be consciously is how we access these Makos, and how will we get there? By the speed of thought, which I've been told, and the calculations I've seen, the speed of thought has been put at 100,000 times the speed of light. 100,000 times the speed of light is the speed of thought. So that's a whole other paradigm we're dealing with there. Anyway, what I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to wrap this up, is go over these notes, make sure I got these things, so I just talked about this a lot. And I want to make sure this is understandable for the people that are listening. Uh, some people say, oh, I can't understand what you're talking about. But I've showed you the pictures, and I'm trying to show you the function, and do your research. You'll find this out for yourself, all right? Um, that's it, actually. So please um, subscribe. Please push the like button. Hit that bell. Personalizes things. You'll get notifications. I myself have subscribed to a couple of channels. I've had to hit that bell again. I don't get any notifications from these people when they post new videos. I think the same thing is going on here. So please hit the like button and please hit the, the bell as well. And I appreciate all the people that have asked me to keep making videos, keep going public with information. Um, I'm actually about to go speak in um, Georgia, Helen, Georgia, at the uh, Camp Disclosure Conference in just a couple of days. So I will uh, probably post that, we'll post this video while I'm there because this will be prevalent to some of the things I'll talk about during my presentation. So thank you very much. Please press uh, to subscribe and take care. Peace.